vengeful spirit and also um play a really good support vengeful spirit i think that it's one of the stronger heroes i think it's pretty damn good at countering um some of the quote-unquote meta heroes it's good versus bat rider it's going to be um shown to be i think Radiant decently strong Team versus lone Pink. druid it's a catch out hero for maybe nature's prophet um, but chen nature's prophet but this, this is what I'm talking about, right? Is is two to three weeks from now, as more tournaments go on, are we still going to see these um, these same, like, three and then throw in Batrider and... Um, what's another one of the heroes Dyer that we saw a lot Bat. at Star Ladder? I, it's probably I, a support I'm missing. Are we going to see more Enchantresses? Because that hero is disgusting. That... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, I I I would be fine with the enchantresses if people stuck to their timing pushes. Five seconds remaining. I I gotta agree that hero is absolutely disgusting when you hit around the twenty-five minute mark, and you're just pushing down building after building, and you're just spamming Radiant out impetus after impetus, bad. and then you give us something like ether lens as well. And you're like, okay, what? <laughs> it, it's a funny. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, no, right, dragon lights. <laughs> it's a funny. Sorry, sorry dragon lights. Okay. Yeah, it's a funniest thing though. I I was playing. A uh, five stack with Blitz last Ten night, remaining. and we're playing against an Enchantress. I'm like, man, this hero Dyer is so strong. Back. I'm actually I'm playing offlane faces for it. I'm getting pretty good farm, and I actually have to after my Aghanims go for um, Silver's Edge because what else am I gonna do against an Enchantress? <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, I'm giving Silver Edge, uh, and Ten Blitz is like, you may need to think about a BKB, and I was like. Doesn't stop impetus shots anymore. He's like, it doesn't? He's like, nope. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Enchantresses, Enchantress will wreck your face no matter what kind of item you have. If she's got distance on you, you are screwed. <sighs> but <clears throat> it, ha it hasn't become like one of those consistent pickups. On that, uh, I think teams are perhaps a, just a little bit hesitant because it's something so very new in a way. Um and I think that it's also better in pub play than it is in competitive. I think that um, anytime you see those kind of like core enchantresses, um, that ne they need to be four or five pickups. But there's, there's only like there's only a couple of American teams that actually run it, and they run it as an offlaner. Yeah, it's typically seen as an offlane pickup. Um, sometimes you see dual offlanes, like the uh, enchantress Aban is probably one of the more well-known combos. Remaining. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty pretty destructive. Um, the remaining. bands, I would say most of the usual suspects here. Witch Doctor um, is actually pretty Reserve damn good time. versus Lone Druid, but um, apparently Heck. Hellraisers don't want to pick that hero up, and they also ban Radiant away the Zeus. Pick. I think that's a pretty smart ban with the Lone Druid and Gyrocopter. I think sort of um, you can see the dots where Power Rangers, if they get a really strong um, mid-game dominant mid-hero, um, that wins its lane and is able to go from there, then you're just going to get run over by the gyrocopter plus, yeah. you know, in this case, Zeus. I, even, and then Lone Druid like pushes Zeus, down your towers. The Zeus puck matchup always seems to be a little Ten more favorable to the remaining. Zeus as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, for you sure. Can, you can only phase shift once, and he can just keep arc Five lightning spamming. Yeah, remaining. and if he just stop spams um, his main lightning bolt, then you can't do Reserve anything about time. it. The old puck where you could right-click phase shift, it was okay, but it still wasn't great. Um, I kind of feel like I'm looking at Alliance. <coughs> yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> it's like I, I know I know we brought them up a hell of a lot, but yeah. they're influencing the meta so heavily right now. Oh yeah, there's a reason to talk about Alliance so much is because um, that was the they look so dominant against EG, and it was mostly seen in the draft. It was like both drafts, it just felt really comfortable for S Alliance. See, it's, it's funny though if you look back, like because I because I didn't get to watch the games live. Unfortunately, my sleeping pattern was not there to what me allow mm -hmm. me to watch it live. Mm -hmm. like, but I did go back and I checked out the two most important things. Mm -hmm. uh, one was the game and two was the Meepo Girls dancing on the Star Ladder stream. Uh, <laughs> if you <laughs> haven't seen that, it's brilliant. It's uh, uh, amazing. Uh -huh. um, two most important things in my life. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you expect nothing less, Cap. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true, <laughs> Toby. You got the reaction every time. Oh my god. Cosplay. Is that, oh, I never saw that one coming. <laughs> no, that, that, you know what? That's not fair, Toby. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't expect nothing less. From, I expect more from you, Toby. <laughs> what? And then, and then you're like, nah. Uh, Cosplay girls, man. They were. 
Yeah, hey, just be happy. <laughs> in reference to picture the how with a vengeful spirit cosplay. Oh uh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> for those who want to see that, you uh. can dig. Uh, <laughs> lost the point now. <laughs> we have a bounty hunter. We we do. Bounty hunter's pretty good at roaming on puck. Not bad at roaming a puck. Normally he's meant to interfere with a Chen, though, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's the thing. He's going to be, like... Um, he's going to be soaking from the Chen, rotating onto the puck, soaking on the Chen, rotating up to the offlane or something to harass the Oracle. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. I've, I found my point again. Yes. I've gone back through my own brain. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the fact, like, I looked at the draft, and my initial thoughts was, wow, this is really balanced if it's the last patch. Like everything should be able to work like Ten both ways, and then I and then I watch the game like, oh wait, that's not balanced. Things Five have just changed. The mindset, remaining. the timings have all changed yeah. Yeah. so heavily in this patch. Yeah, things got to be kind of fleshed out. Back. People, teams got to figure out. It's not necessarily like about changing the the patch too much. While there probably does need to be some tweaks um, here and there, it's it's much much more like ninety percent more about teams changing their mindset and figuring out the counters remaining. to what is um, what is dominant right now. Man, this lineup is Five so like remaining. just watching the matchups. You got a full intel lineup here from Hellraisers, a lineup mm -hmm. which is capable Reserve of time. roaming, ganking, and potentially pushing. Uh, but we don't know who their their number one position will be at the moment. While the Power Rangers line, I could see this coming a little bit with the Chen and the Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. They get Lone Druid who time. can take the creep waves off. They've got Bounty Hunter who can give them the information Radiant beforehand and back. potentially set up for ganks on very weak heroes because they're all intel. Um, and then Jaro and DK's counter push is quite strong and they're also very difficult to gank because the puck can't solo Dyer kill a DK. Team. And if it does solo kill a DK, well, I'm going to slap my head on this desk. You need a good physical damage dealer here. Um, Sven was my go-to immediately. That's been banned out. Ursa, not life stealer. Um, it's okay versus Lone Druid, but it's not good versus Gyrocopter Dragonite. Um, but Ursa's okay. Um, damn, I need to pull up the list of heroes. Ten seconds remaining. It's just you, you get a better idea of what's left Five and what can be picked remaining. up. Because I think if you have the control of Ember Spirit, is I think it's just they're going to get run over too quickly. You need a fighting hero. Wraith King is not bad. Um, Wraith King's not bad. I'll be, I'll be worried though that Wraith King mm. would just end up getting kited if you hit. Lycan is actually another one. Um, that's pretty damn decent with both uh, Nature's Prophet and Puck. It's sort of like... Um, the Howl works kind of in the way that Draw Ranger used to work with Puck. Oh, and wow. that you can increase that damage. Ooh, Terror Blade! Alright, Toby, I'm, I'm gonna be a little bit lost here because I do not have a good grasp on this hero. The new, and the new when it's strong and when it's bad, I, I honestly don't. It's Well, in that case, Cap, we <clears> can <throat> learn together during this game. I will tell you, though, because I've faced against this combo, too. Oracle Huskar? Pretty goddamn disgusting if you do use <laughs> it right. Oracle Slark, yeah, it's all right. It can work. It, it sometimes it has its small gimmicky things, but it's not amazing. Uh, Oracle Terra Blade is kind of gimmicky because it ensures Five if Oracle uses the uh, the ultimate to save Terra Blade at the right time, he's like guaranteed he gets off his ultimate. Reserve right? time. Yeah. yeah, it's like you have seven to nine seconds based on the duration. Or that the means level you should be. Able, that means you'll survive every time too. Yeah, what? it's like, yeah, seven to nine seconds you should be able to suck I'm not sure what the whole interaction is going to be from there. I think it's still normal. Your HP would go up to be what it would be, but all the damage that's been inflicted up to that point is still going to hit you, so maybe you still die. So you, so you just need enough life to survive <clears throat> the damage which is being delayed. Yeah. That's it. Because I, uh, uh, I, I sent you a message last night about... Um, about another interaction with that it was um oh it was with maledict yeah, ma yeah mal maledict and sunder yeah it's about a, a maledict is about like hp loss not damage dealt yeah. so if you get like this massive heal like say you've taken crap tons of damage but all of a sudden omni knight with fresher comes in and it's like boom double heal and pops an ultimate as well uh, maledict's not going to do very much damage no matter how much damage is actually dealt to you because it's based off of what your eight the the loss of hp yeah. that had you've endured rather than um, how much damage has been dealt to you. Yeah. Prepare for Which battle. is what the, the difference is between him and Oracle with that. Yeah. 
Because that's what my my brain first went to. It was just like, oh, well, you'll just survive pointing. It's like, ah, oh, actually, no. So this is something that, like, Ake's been doing almost every single game. TPing out, throwing down a ward. Uh, this ward, the first time I saw Ake throw it down, I was like... What the fuck? Yeah, Bobo's like... <laughs> <laughs> somebody was like, uh, one for three seven, I think. It was, is that block? And I was like, no way. I was like, no way. And Bobo's like, yeah, it does. I was like, oh, man. Uh, that the, the, camp, the camp box is huge for this That game. looks so wrong, though. Like, yeah. that looks wrong. Yeah, the camp go it, it goes something like. What what what's, what's your special markers you use? Uh, oh, wait, does, does, like does the camp box actually reach the top hill hillside like that the little edge? Huh? Does the does the box actually reach the hillside? No, 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 that no, just, no. That's just that where the drawing, drawing is going. That was just bad drawing. Okay. Uh, I am not a very artistic person, Toby. My. I try. And I could not draw a straight line if my life depended on it. I like how both teams do exactly the same thing, though. <laughs> oh, rough stuff! <laughs> Look at that. The counter ward, already there preemptively. But the bright side, big number will know where not to run. Oh, oh and is gonna. Sad thing I is wonder like why he threw it so far to the right. It's just kind of interesting to me. I, I, normally, I would have figured you would have put it further to the left. But, yep. So that ward's gonna go, uh, gonna go bye bye. Vignum still getting some harassment onto Gotham. Part of the problem for a bounty hunter in tracking down a Chen is going to be the fact that, um, well, I guess not in this case because he's blocked out one of the camps. He's gonna rotate over. Is that Chen can play off of both sides of the jungle now. No, no. I would like to welcome to you uh, the new courier. It's uh, it's a Chen model, uh, sponsored by Hellraisers, stopping bounty hunter from getting any kind of snipe off. He brought a salve out to the puck. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the sad life of the Chen. Uh, at, at this point, if you goddamn it, you almost just want to, like, get the hell out. And it's like, okay, if, 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 the, if the bounty is chasing me, I move to a position where I can just disappear from the world, smoke up, and then just go for a gank. Because he's, he's yeah. not going to be able to farm in the jungle. Like, he's, the, the bounty will, will just leech everything, and he only just feels the fire of the bounty hunter. But yeah, because this camp is blocked, and he can't try and play off of both sides of the jungle, so now... Well, still big them. Get a little damage on it. What?! Did Gotham just throw down that ward in order to block that path? Holy cow, that was actually so clutch. I'm sorry, I was looking the opposite direction. Did he direction. do that, or big them did that? I don't know. Well, who had the Ironwood branch? Uh, I, I'm actually not sure. I want, to, I want to go back and look at that thing now. I'm sorry, people on the stream. Camera to us. Or maybe the bounty hunter just really screwed up. All right, so you've got a, a farming terror blade up on top. He's not keeping up with the gyrocopter at the moment. Uh, there's been a little bit of uh, weird creep pulling that's been coming out from the lone druid and trying to be encountered by the oracle. And Shashlo on this off lane. This is where I'm, I'm interested to see if he does just go directly into the phase boots or if he feels like he needs to be a little bit tankier in this lane. Alright, I was wrong. You were Chen, wrong? I, I'm, Are you yeah, Chen did not make a clutch play. Bounty Hunter <laughs> screwed himself up and blocked himself. Bottom lane, Furion. There's no flag oh, though. It's not dead. Can't dive underneath the tower. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. So, so I did actually end up seeing it on the camera, did I? Because my eyes didn't... No, 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 I was looking back at the stream to figure out who had the Ironwood branch. And the answer is Bounty Hunter. Okay. So, he blocked his own area of retreat and took, like, probably an extra 150 damage. Okay, whoops. You're right, I wanted to praise the Chen. <laughs> Could have been an amazing play, but really, it was just... Crap. Well, Shashlo, miss pulls. He does, however, have a triple stack there now. We still haven't had the first blood. And in fact, are they looking to try it? Are they chasing up the Cheshire Cat? Undershock's got a lot of damage here, but the body blocking from the bear is giving Cheshire Cat the space, but not enough. Oh, wow. Undershock will claim the first blood. And Big Num, he also doesn't have Invis, oh. so he'll also go down. A double kill to the Terror Blade. You have just fed the demon. Yeah, you can't play that far forward if you know the Terror Blade has his uh, metamorphosis back up. 
Um, you can't play forward unless you have your um, Savage Roar. That's one of the big things is that um, defensive dual lanes and tri lanes playing against an off lane lone druid have to play around the Savage Roar timing. You need to go in, force out Savage Roar, and then go in again in the next 10 to, 50, uh, 10 to 20 seconds and try and force that gank again um, while that you know pseudo escape mechanism that we we're talking about is on cooldown. Bingham's going to be in a good place to get damage on Afo here. Yeah, but he's also got a Chen oh, coming down on him, and with the silence, that bear's not going to get in range for a clap, or maybe it's he can't have the guest clap. But the rune still does go the way of the, of the puck, so he manages to burn through enough of the ball charges before the breathe fire connects. It's a level three breathe fire too, so it had kill potential. And uh, are they going to do the little tricky? Drop the orb, boop, heal, 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 right back in. Classy. That immediately uh, undoes everything the Bounty Hunter just worked for. Yeah. He was trying to set the Dragon Eye up for um, this is for a success. Because as soon as the Dragon Eye gets level 6 and has mana, if Afo's that low, it's like guaranteed kill. You know, There's also more and more space time. as well. Shashla's running out of space. He's going to TP out and hope he survives. Uh, he will. But it's the fact the Bounty Hunter also, because he, he died in the top lane. Obviously, to the Terror Blade. Uh -huh. And then fails to do this. The Chen instantly walked to the jungle. After they kill in the top lane, like, goddamn, just ma he just, like, legged it for a camp. Got as much farm as he could. Again, then the bounty hunter gets, takes a lot of damage. He instantly went into the jungle to farm up. An article of faith. And he's actually starting his rotation. If he gets the positioning on this, potentially they can actually kill off this Radiant Courier. Uh, he's not in. getting off the... He can't really gank. Maybe he could kill the Courier. That would be pretty insane if he does, but there's he, unfortunately not the right creeps for him to gank He can get lane. it on the way back out again. Maybe. Like, it's already taken a little bit of damage on, on oh. the wave, and that's got Cheshire Cat's boots oh, in it, so it. yeah, it's going to fly directly over the top of him. One more attack, and he'll get it. Has been so goddamn just lost his boots. Uh, uh, so, sorry, Cheshire wait, Cat. sorry, not yeah. goddamn. Uh, Cheshire Cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that's okay. I mean, honestly, a spirit bait, like the lone druid's doing nothing but farming with Iron Talon anyway, so... It's not that big of a loss for Power Rangers, but Hellraisers are taking good control of the map. Chen, I think, got him um, identified pretty well what to do against the Bounty Hunter that's harassing him. Try to you know, move around, back and forth. Um, opened up that camp on the right-hand side, I think, was pretty important because you need to bounce back and forth between the two. <laughs> Can they actually force it underneath this tower? Like, if J4 comes up like this... The cooldown's already going to go to work on the side, but it's chasing up to Shasha, but the problem's over on the left. It's Chen being engaged, but he has enough nuke damage that he kills off the line before his own death. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, they actually get revenge kills, so Gyrocopter, as well as the line, will end up going down with a nice rotation in from the Oracle. Big was looking for an opportunity on that Nature's Prophet, but Shashlo playing defensive Dyer's again, backing himself out. Yeah, Gyro just playing too far Radiant's forward. Um, that was the nukes of the Oracle coming into play, that, because the Furion didn't even have his level 6 yet. He got level 6 off of that kill, so that was Gyrocopter just uh, being a too, bit too far forward without regen. Meanwhile, north of the wall, Terrorblade is just beaten through that T1 tower. Uh, the lines up to use Mandarin to get out of this. Hello, bottom, bottom lane. Uh, Oracle. <laughs> yeah, she gets the kill over the gyro. I'm not quite sure if he popped from this, but he'll trigger the dust, which Radiant's reveals Big Numb. No, he'll end up surviving attack. through it. And then that Hellbear oh, smash they can kill him. Yeah, they can. They're just going to keep the vision on him. The clap oh, no, will connect. Missed. And maybe the, oh, the heal is actually working now against the Oracle. Uh, Yellow Warrior. He, he kind of screwed that up. I think he needed to hold on to Fortune Zen just a bit longer to ensure that the, uh, the Ursa Bear would get close enough for the clap. Because that would ensure the kill. Well, the clap still connected, though, didn't it? Uh, it looked like the damage still connected. Attack. And then uh, the heal kicked in. Well, either way, I th he, he probably should have... I think it was the, the distant... Okay, they still get the kill. Seriously, respect the Oracle, guys! Uh, don't stick around at low HP, that's not a good idea. It wasn't just the Oracle, it was Test of Faith as well from the Chen. He, yeah, got, he got doubly blown. Yeah, that's pure damage nukes coming in. Oh, Shashlo, he's... He can still just TP out of, out of this one. But he's trying to steal all the camps and just cause interference on Power Rangers' side of the map. Well, what a start for Hellraiser. Like, you're 7 for 1, you got a 5k gold advantage 8 minutes in. It's 2.5k on the experience graph. Yeah, Gotham's really impressing with the way he is handling, handling Chen in this game. Um, this could be 
the start of like a future first spin when you're going up against Hellraisers. Just the way he's playing it, he, I think he's made the right attack. moves despite the pressure. Okay. Like when the th three heroes were surrounding him, you know, he turned on the lane, got that kill. Now he's maybe, yeah, they got the stun. The long range stone from the mud golem. If, even then, I think he was still dead because he had died from the dream call breaking when his TP ended. Yeah, maybe. They just had to do enough damage to get the kill. But Hellraiser's now like. This lineup is becoming more and more sustainable. The fact you've also got the double arcane boots with Hand of God, plus everything else that Yellow Warrior brings is the Oracle. They've got never ending life coming their way. Undershock's in a position where like, he's completely bypassed on the Sunder, and maybe that is something we should have a look at because we were. We need to learn a little bit from this. Um, with the Terra Blade build. I guess it's just a tower trade off right now, tier 1 for tier 1. But he went for a 2 4 2 build. Yeah, so in my head, I was kind of thinking about um, why the Terra Blade was picked up over some of the other heroes I mentioned. Because I felt like they needed um, to have an intense physical damage dealer um, that would combo well with the Puck's disables. And for me, I immediately thought of like Ursa or Lycan, those kind of heroes. But I think the Terra Blade win in, um, with the Oracle is actually just as powerful, perhaps even more powerful than the Oracle Ursa against the Oracle. Wow, here they go. The cooldown's gonna go to work. Puck doesn't have face shoots available, but he's just been given life by his Oracle. That life will now be expended, but the damage done during it. Actually, no, it won't. He still survived. He bounced over. Big numb. Well, if he goes for this, he'll lose his life. Afro. Oh, the oh, send back! Send him back! Oh, he get everybody. Oh, and he comes right back with a full bottle, too. Oh. Add, add, add insult to injury. He's back up to full HP with Oracle there. Uh, Holy cow, HR just outclassing <laughs> Power Rangers so goddamn hard. It's not even like new tricks, like they're pulling back every single classical trick with the puck yeah. to do this kind of stuff. And like it just looks so good for Big Num that just to just, just hit him and just get the kill, but mm -hmm. it's a level four bounty hunter. Like he doesn't even have the follow up damage with a high level Shuriken toss. I know we like really keep hitting on the Oracle. But I'm gonna bring him up once again, guys. <laughs> this is why Oracle is a really good counter into the Gyrocopter. The reason we're talking about it so much is because he is a new hero, and I think that everybody is still kind of learning um, what he brings to the table. And one of the big things is Oracle is a direct counter to Gyrocopter in many ways because Gyrocopter brings so much mag magic damage in the first 25 minutes of the game. Um, that's his biggest strength. That's why he takes over the game. That's why he was so popular in previous metas because he was one of the few one positions that could just like get aggressive at 10 minutes and never really stop because he was able to fight so early. Um, but Oracle counters that just with Fate's Edict being able to prevent all that magic damage coming in. Um, and obviously, Gyrocopter is going to be looking to only focus down one hero with that magic damage. So, Oracle just you know, put, puts a stopper in that, prevents the Gyrocopter from getting aggressive as he wants to. And plus, that you add the fact that Gyrocopter is, uh, well, here they go. Puck's been waiting for this for the last minute. Like, it was underneath the tier 1 tower. Now, Terra Blade just sent straight back out of the fight. Goddamn. He is fairly injured, but Shashlo with the Sprout keeps the bear away. He comes through with the Iron Talon. Finally, Lion's going to end something. And he does it with the Finger of Death. As uh, I don't know if that Courier really planned to come in that far. Afro's attack, well, I don't know if I want to follow the action oh, or follow the Courier. The Courier kill. dies. Okay, yeah, we, we follow both. As uh, Goddamn starts Luki down to the Gyrocopter. They don't have enough damage anymore to kill him off as he gets back underneath his own tier 1 tower. But the Bounty Hunter kept the pressure on. Now Cheshire Cat's a little bit too deep. He has a resum available on the bear, but with that jaunt forward, actually he's not going to jaunt forward, not with general TPing in. Afro decided not to overcommit. They only lost one hero, which was the Oracle, and it committed something as nuking as the as the finger Radiant's of death. Middle tower has fallen. And you still take out the tier two tower. This terror blade's got so much. He's got 7.7k net worth. Like what do we got? There's a mech on the courier for goddamn. There's the uh, there's the Yasha flying out for undershock. This is what I was talking about as well. Like, Terrorblade, there's multiple ways to use the, um, the Terrorblade ultimate. So when you save him with the Oracle, Oracle almost survived because Undershock, I believe he was turning around to sunder the Oracle, knowing that Yola Warrior was in trouble and knowing that he also had enough heals to be able to survive thanks to the, the Oracle's uh, False Promise plus Purifying Flames. So he was going to save the Oracle and be saved by the Oracle at the same time. 
Uh, but that's the other thing, right? I was talking about the fact that, like, any of these agility heroes that, are, like, are massively magic damage heavy, one of the biggest downsides is that they are very susceptible to nukes. It's usually offset by early BKBs, but Oracle uh, comes online pretty damn fast. Cheshire is down. And they're going to get another one, too. It's J4. He thought he could have had a crack, and, uh, well, maybe when Big Nome comes in, they'll get more. The Dire Sentry was down, so there was no way that Big Nome could really help out his teammate. And they're just losing quick heroes in succession, and this is completely out of control now. Like, the Terror Blade is beyond huge for this point of the game. The Chen's keeping everyone alive. Radiant General has no presence. Like, he's still trying to get a Blink Dagger onto this Dragon Knight, which I assume is his idea. Because they don't have any initiation. Like, they can't rely on the Lion. This Lion's never going to get a Blink Dagger. Or if he does, he's just going to pop the second he jumps in. Radiant's top tower has well, fallen. Well, uh, he'll either get the Blink Dagger now, he'll get the Shadow Blade and like uh, 300 gold. Or no, more than that. Um, he, either Blink Dagger, Shadow Blade, or he goes BKB. Honestly, I don't think he has a good choice for his first item. Um, it would have been like a really fast Shadow Blade against Puck in an even game. Uh, is actually really effective for Dragonite, but... But this puck's already too big. Uh, yeah. It's just the fact that Hellraisers are really grouped up that you're not going to have um, the kind of... Because when you have Shadow Blade or Blade Tiger on Dragonite, his biggest advantage is that single target stun that's so long duration. So he moves around the map, he's able, able to set up like really great pickoffs, especially on the squishier, more mobile heroes like Puck or the supports who are really damn squishy early on. But unfortunately, this is going to be Hellraiser staying up for the most part. Maybe getting a pick off like on Big Num. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe the other way around. Shashla came up by himself while the rest of them were going for Roshan. You could say space created because now Power Rangers are definitely not looking at Roshan. But you still, yeah. yeah. This will also mean Manta coming in pretty soon for Undershock. Um. I don't know. Is is Manta really? I don't think Manta's the pickup, to be honest. I oh, think it'll break you free of entangle without um, having to have something like a BKB. That's true, but I think the AOE of the Dyer's gyrocopter mixed with the attack. fact that you don't have a whole lot of HP yet, I would almost rather see him build like Yasha, and because his farm is going so well, go straight for the the Scotty. But I'm sure it's, it's, it's also be the Manta. illusion play. Because yeah. like the lion's been removing a couple of his illusions, so when he goes into metamorphosis, normally you want to have like a huge, big army. Just attacking in. Uh, hello, J4. Goodbye, J4. Uh, can they pick up the bear as well? I guess you guys TPing out, but at oh, least yeah, they can they take the bear with them. Like, there's a resummon in six seconds. They just gonna keep the damage on it. Oh no! One second. Warrior. No. It was enough time for Cheshire Cat to get it back out again. He queued the wrong unit. If he queues the bear, I think they kill it. But threw it yeah. on a tree instead. Pick off on recovery. He doesn't have his BKB yet, so he's dead. This opens up the base now. 40 seconds without a gyrocopter. Yeah, maybe going? with oh. Undershock having that Manta coming in, he could just throw Illusion since the gyrocopter's down. They won't have a real easy way to clean this up immediately. So he should get some pretty decent damage with this Metamorphosis Manta. This Puck really has no fear. Half Oak is going to orb. Doesn't face shift combo with it. So the Bounty Hunter will get the pick off. They had the extra help that to get the stun in. But on top lane, now you see that push coming in. The Metamorphs is already going to go to work. He's going to create as many copies of himself as possible. As uh, he waits out for the right timing of the mana style. They've almost picked off the tier 3 towers. They just hadouk it through the creeps. Radiant Over towards the Bounty Hunter on the side. And right now the Lone Druid, all he can help do is bring down that Chen army. The tracks are doing some good work. And then Oracle, he can't stay alive long enough. But the melee Radiant Rex has already gone down. We're 17 minutes in. You just claim a Rex. Remember that Thunder is also available here from the Terror Blade. Which you will use over on the Lion. Giving himself a little bit more life as Shashlo trying to outrun the bear for the moment. With the phase boots and the drum charge, he might be capable of doing it. The dragon tail stun over on the over on the terror blade. That's gonna be the bigger kill. Actually switching his treads up. The Aegis Immortal will now trigger as Shashlo dies over on the side, but they're beating in more help. And it's gonna be Afro back to the fight, joining Undershock, the line of fall, and then a double dream call, catching out the bounty hunter as well as the Dragonite. The Dragonite TP's back safely. The bounty hunter will not be so ha so uh, lucky though. Great recovery from Hellraiser there. That was actually a pretty disastrous fight in a way because they were so far ahead and they were about to lose so many hero kills. It's it's like they gave a little bit too much to Power Rangers if they lost Undershock there. But with um, 
The Boots of Travel's in, and then the Furion coming back in to provide that extra support. They played that pretty damn well. Recovery's gonna try this again. A call down onto the creep wave. They get the Dragon Test on over on the Oracle, but the Blink Fog from Afro follows up with the Silence. They're gonna go for the long range hit on the DK. But he can't be controlled enough. Recovery's just getting nuked and forced back a little bit, but. Right now, Hellraisers, they don't need to get involved in these fights. Just back up. Like, he just took out a top rack in under 20 minutes. I like how they're also dispelling track with Fortune's end. Yep, I mean, it's a fairly spammable nuke once you have it maxed out six seconds. So, you can just throw it around on your allies when you've got this much uh, extra farm. It really he's feels already like Icerog just hates Bounty Hunter. Earned. Like, you got you got a Badness well as Oracle in the game now, like, in the better at least. And, like, the Bounty Hunter can't keep a track on to save his life. Yeah, well, I don't know if you could say Ice Frog hates him, Toby, because that hero is still a hero, yeah. despite those Radiant those things happening. So, I think it just goes to show how powerful that uh, that Bounty was for so long. Are they going to loop around? He's still got a hand of God of Valve, Undershock being protected by Yolo Warrior. He starts the Fortune 10, keeping the Dragonite out of the fight and wasting that time on his Dragon form. And then the Dream Call recovery also not in the great position. There's no BKB on him. Chen got to get the hand of God off, able to do so as well as the Meg Charge. He can't stay alive long enough, however. Afo inside the Radiant base. He's got no friends in there with him. In fact, they're still trying to battle on the front lines up against bears as well as dragons. But they get that fortune set locked down over on the general. They need a little bit more damage, however, and they managed to get it. The Oracle spamming out so many fortunes, and now the Finger of Death finally is able to get a kill. It's going to be over on the puck as recovery turns on the flag cannon, but then Sunder removes almost all of his life. He has to instantly retreat, allowing Undershock to bring down that bottom tier 3 tower. They put the bear back onto the front lines. They may all be tracked up for the moment, but Oracle, well, he gets revenge onto that line for his fallen comrade. With the call down, they're losing a little bit of life on the creep wave as well as the heroes. They don't have that healing power of the Chen, but when you've got an Oracle, what more do you need? Like you use your you lose your nature's profit. And he did buy back previously, so they're not gonna have a they're not gonna play at this. Let's just get the hell out. And Looks now like they may use a yeah. body block. They're, they're still gonna pick up Yolo Warrior here. Are Undershock they? should just abandon him. Are they? The, the best that Yolo Warrior can do He's is gonna get sent back. Make sure... Oh, He's gonna get mech sent oh, back. The attack. Oh my god! Get Goddamn will try the TP. They're able to just to pull him back in again with that Savage Roar. So Goddamn will sacrifice his life for the Oracle. But at this point, Oracle's worth more. Because he's actually worth a kill streak. Yeah. I was gonna say, the best you can do at that point, uh, I thought, was just purge off the, the track right before you die. Um, this is pretty concerning for me. Uh, Hellraisers will, like, almost... Almost guaranteed still win this game and everything else, but um, their play as a team is a little bit concerning for me and like kind of their future because I do feel that's two fights in a row where they've just sort of um, forced it and it's been kind of sloppy and the only reason that they came out Radiant's on top was because they were true. so far ahead. Right? If they weren't, you know, 10 grand ahead by that first fight at the top lane, I think they really would have lost most of the ground that they uh, gained in the first 15 minutes of the game. Well, you, you can show the swing you're talking about when you look at the experience graph. Because that's the one that has swung back up again. Yeah. You can see, I mean, the effect of those kills. The fact that, like, if Puck doesn't have enough, right, to be able to do that play where he boots or travels into the top lane and they have that secondary fight around Undershock Second Life, um, if they don't have that, then Undershock just dies. It's another large amount of golden experience that comes in. Maybe it's just because they feel so in control of the game, but I would say against tougher opponents, Hellraisers will not be able to make the same kind of plays. They won't be this far ahead in net worth and experience against the enemy team. And if they make those same kind of like almost YOLO-ish, like let's just end the game, go straight through to the front door and who cares what sort of traps are set up, um, they're gonna get rebuffed really hard and lose their advantage. So, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain, like, Hellraisers, they definitely still have this in the bag. They can still sit back, farm up Scotty on Undershock. Um, the Puck still has a lot of growth. It looks like he's going to be going Scythe rather than, um, say, an Aghanim's build, um, which is fine there. Furion's, like, full right-click menace at this point in time with that completed Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. So I think that's um, completely fine, but... 
again, against tougher opponents, I don't think they'll have the same kind of opportunities. Probably. <laughs> but at the same time, that's also the mindset of the team, isn't it? Like, you understand who you're up against, and you're like, you know what, we, we trashed them in game one, we feel so superior with that draft here in game two. Like, out of that double kill on the Terror Blade, I'm fairly certain Undershock is feeling immortal. Yeah, but I would say, like, when I've watched Tier 1 teams play against, like, some of the, like, w the Were these Tier 1 tier CIS threes. teams you're talking about, though? Um, I mean, yes and no. I, I would say, like, if I were to watch VP play, I think VP, while they definitely struggled at, you know, going high ground, that's just the thing they struggle with, they would still play it, um, I think, pretty controlled and more disciplined than I'm seeing Hellraiser's. Prize. That being said, Hellraiser's individual skill is definitely shining here. Uh, they play pretty well around each other as a team. Uh, you see a lot of individual plays that are fairly top notch. The combo is also like just, just the synergy of pairs seems to work nicely. I mean, when I look at this team, that, that's what I think of too is individual skill. I think Afo is like a um, very talented player. Like I think he's a great mid. Shotchlo has always impressed me as well. I think he's one of the the other like CIS like almost pub starish play where you could just like take control of the game solo. Uh, those two I immediately think of. Uh, God, I'm definitely impressed. I think on some of his Chen play this game and how he's reacted to pressure. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Oh, they've already taken out the uh, Okay, so this is this an example, right? Roshan is spawning right now, but they're still going to push uphill. Uh, and they're going to lose the five to not careful. Yellow Warrior gets caught out in the front lines. Recovery gets a BKB and Black and a duration off. Oracle will pop at this point, unless someone wants to try and stunder and keep him alive. But uh, uh, he'll actually hold the back lines, and I'm completely wrong. He actually ends up living through it all. What is this? The puck actually pulled <laughs> back and, and uh, jaunted and uh, beat himself back in again. So they're just going to call the GG call. That's it. Hellraisers, they took down the two big calls of Power Rangers, and at that point, there was just no, there was no answer. Well, Hellraisers, looking about where I would kind of place them. I think Power Rangers, the, the name of the past. If you expected the Power Rangers where they were like kind of at their heyday, that, that has been gone for a long time now. It has. Um, Hellraisers. But they, they also had, like, like FNG was a huge part of that team when oh, they had yeah, that heyday. Sure. I would say Hellraisers, um, like, their individual talent will carry them through uh, most of these, like, Tier 2 or Tier 3 teams. But uh, I will be more interested to see how Hellraisers stand up against... Um,